close because I just realized I didn't even have the microphone on. Ay. What's up, YouTube? Graver here, and today we are going to be taking a look at this. The Nerf Rival Edge Series Jupiter. I finally got my hands on one, and truthfully, it was really because of a post over on the Nerf subreddit. A user by the, and I apologize if I butcher this, uh, by the username of Nawa Nug, uh, and I'll put their name here, did a, recently did a post of a rival Jupiter and a rival takedown in a very nice purple and black color scheme. Uh, and here is the inspiration that I'm kind of taking this off of. And the purple looked so good on it that, and also it looked very similar to the purple that I have been using now for a couple of, you know, for quite some time. And I saw it, I'm like, oh, the Jupiter looks really good in it. And I'm like, I got to do it now. So I decided to finally get one of these and... I'm going to do the full review on it, and but I may also do the cosmetic mod on it, uh, just and throw it in here somewhere, because I'm not going to be doing a spring upgrade on this, at least not right now, and I'll explain why when we get into the nooks and crannies of the blaster itself. But uh, going over the cosmetics of the blaster, this is... This comes in the Edge Series color, which is this ugly, ugly neon highlighter yellow, um, along with a top rail here, a bottom rail here, which also is really neat because it comes with this bipod, which is really nice, and a built-in monopod, which is just wonderful because then you're able to get all of your Nerf rival sniping heart can. I don't, I don't know where I was going with this, but yeah, it's basically supposed to be a sniper rifle. A very short sniper rifle. But it has this big, huge thumb hole stock that you can fit your hand in along with your thumb. The one thing that really did catch my eye with this, which I really did like a lot, is not only is the monopod, but the trigger and the bolt are already ready. So that is less for me to paint on this, which is wonderful. Um... Also, the design of the trigger itself is also really nice. It's nice and skeletonized. It doesn't have, like, the big plate that most of Nerf blasters actually have. So it's really already very sleek and very nice. Now, it also does have this huge clear window in the front, which you can see the, the built-in magazine tube, which should let you know what this is. It's basically a Kronos or a Takedown or a Reaper Blaster or Saturn or whatever the hell else you want to put the analogy on but yes this is basically a giant chronos i'm fine with that i like the chronos and i also like my saturn and i like my takedowns so that's fine now a couple of things that i will just throw right off the bat that i'm it's not that i'm not happy with but i normally i would save this for you know the final thoughts part and all but one thing that does kind of get me is the bolt is not ambidextrous it's basically designed for right-handed users, which most Nerf stuff is designed for, because when you shoulder it and you're sighted, it's easier to just take your hand off of the trigger and hold the front rather than doing this. Also, I found for some reason, even though I'm priming this right-handed regardless, it's weird because if I'm doing it left-handed, it seems to jam on me a little more than if I actually do it quote-unquote properly. So, and I apologize for the loud pop. Yes, I'm dry-firing this, but it's still stock, so it's fine. Like, okay, it did get a little stuck there, but, like, it, does, it doesn't get as stuck when I do it right-handed. So, it's, it's, an odd, it's an odd little beast. Also... I really don't understand why this has a monopod. <laughs> I wouldn't be laying down in grass to fire a rival blaster, but hey, it is what it is. If you want to do some tabletop shooting, you know, more power to you and all. Um, the bipod itself is actually nice. It folds down. It has a very wide 
uh, I guess, stands. And also, these are not spring-loaded in any way, shape, or form. It's, you pull the legs down with holding that yellow, not yellow, orange button, push it up, or push it in, and then push up, and you close up the legs. Also, the legs can fold back in either direction, so it's however you want to do it. I'm more likely than not, not keeping this on here. I will be looking for something along the lines of a angled foregrip, kind of like Nawa Nug used, or probably maybe sourcing my own from like Fan France Foamworks or Foamdemic or something. But that's really the, oh, and of course it does have a built-in safety switch, which also is only right-handed. Um, although it's actually much easier for me to get it on my left, holding it left-handed, it's a lot easier for me to use it. So it's weird. They made the safety left-handed, but they made the bolt right-handed. So it is what it is. Anyway, let's go over to the workbench. We'll open this thing up. We'll take a look at it. And probably the next time you see it after that, it may be painted up. I don't know. I have not yet decided. Oh, actually, before I forget, like the Edge series, this also comes with a target, which is this one, which is the one everyone loves. And I can understand why. This is a very nice target. Not like that piece of crap that the Saturn came with. You know what you did. That's why you're sitting there. All in pieces. Anyway. The target is nice. It's pretty big. It's got a huge base on it. The only thing that I have to say that kind of... I went... Huh. With was... Is how it works. Because... It's got this metal plate here. Along with a little metal disc here. So... When you shoot it, it makes a little ding noise. However, it has a huge back travel. So, but the target and everything is all set up to look this way. But to me, it would make more sense to like kind of hit it this way. But that's just me. And also, no, you cannot reverse it because this is all solid and rolled together. There are no screw holes. So, and if you do put it on backwards, it doesn't make the ding noise. But... Anyway, that was everything cosmetically, so now we're going to go up to the workbench and we'll open it up and we'll see what's actually inside the Jupiter. So, yeah. Okay, so for sake of time, as always, I have opened everything up. Now, I did want to point out that you will see these, all the screws are about, the, actually should be the same size, except you'll have about five of these really, really long ones. Uh, two of them go actually in the back of the cheek breast right there. The other three long ones are right up front here. So you have two long screws, basic, five long screws at the ends. The rest are all normal size. So also this will not lay flat because they put the bolt on the side without the screws. So the side with the screws is nice and flat. This other side is not. So opening it up and... On this side, well, I had a few screws that were still in there, so oopsie. But here on this side, we have some of the priming stuff. Uh, it looks like here, here, and not sure what the hell that's for, but here we have the ratchet for the bolt which if i can get away with it is most more likely than not coming out because i think that's my issue with the prime if i have that out i might be able to actually prime this very easily left-handed uh it also looks like it is screwed in in two spots not sure what that's for but like the saturn you are able to separate everything out which is what i'm going to do the black is going to go gray and apparently i missed another screw the yellow is going to go purple and the orange is going to go red. So I'm going to get those separated up and hopefully nothing is like real. It looks like it should be fine. The only issue is it looks like the window is actually glued in place, but that's fine. I'm going to sand that up and that's going to get uh, painted gray. So I'm not worried about that. So, yeah, I am going to get rid of the window when I do mine up. So, all right. So, looking at the thetas of this thing, yeah, it looks like it is just a really big Kronos. 
uh, we have, and I'm actually going to lift that up here just so it can lay a little flatter. So we have the barrel here, and it looks like in order to load it, everything kind of shifts back. So that's why you have like that bit of room back there. Uh, this tip I'm actually going to keep orange because, I mean, it's going to be a big chunky rifle. So we have the trigger here, which is on a really big bar to the catch system. And this system is basically just like out of almost the Reaper, um, the Reaper shotguns, because you have these two screwed into the, the priming bar screwed into the side there. And it doesn't look like it's an offset prime. It looks like it actually does go to the dead center of it. And there we have that. So, yeah. And, again, everything can come out. So, I'm going to take all the internals out on this side. Put aside, obviously, what is not going to get painted, which is all of the internals. Except for this button. I'm going to do this button. Uh, I'm going to do the button for the monopod. And also, if I can pop the safety off, I'm going to do them in uh, red. And then, obviously, the bolt I'm not painting. I'm not painting the trigger because it makes no sense to do that. So, But, yeah, these are the internals of how it's supposed to look. And now I'm going to strip it all out and start getting sanding on this because I'm going to paint it up. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Jupiter. Now, obviously, I have finished modifying mine, but I'll give you my thoughts on what I think of the stock Jupiter and then what I think of this. So, for the stock blaster itself, um, I mean, it's solid. It's not terrible. It's really fun to use when you don't have, you know, priming issues like I was having. I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say it was partial twofold. One... The way it actually primes with that ratchet and also i think i may have been trying to cycle it a little too quickly so i'll say it's a 50 50 design slash user error that i was having the issues with the bolt now that being said though regardless when i was just kind of playing it around and i was using it right-handed and cycling like this i had a lot less fails than when i was doing it like this i don't know why but I was. So this definitely was not made left-handed friendly. Which, again, hurts me and, you know, others. But for the majority that are right-handed, you should be fine. Now, regarding the price of this, this one is 50 bucks, And it's still 50 bucks if you go to Walmart.com. Because I haven't seen this in store for a while and that's where I got mine. This retails for $49.97. The Saturn retails for $39.97. So, if you want to do the comparison of a performance, function, and fun, performance, they're on par. Function, I have to give to the Saturn, because that's a pump-action shotgun. This is a bolt-action rifle. The pump-action shotgun is going to, more likely than not, cycle a whole lot cleaner than the bolt, as you saw earlier. Fun-wise, I mean, both are friggin' fun to use. You know, don't get me wrong on it. Now, in regards to pricing, yes, this is $10 more. But when you look at what the two come with, that comes with a really crappy target. This comes with a really good target and a bipod. Now, does that justify an extra $10? Your mileage may vary. But I could take, honestly take it or leave it. I mainly got this because I wanted this. Now, that's my thoughts on its stock. Now that I've fixed it up to accommodate myself a little more, I really like this thing. I really do. Because what I did besides obviously painting it up was I removed the ratchet piece that was on this side of the blaster, which means this now cycles very smoothly. And I do have a few rival rounds here, so... I'm going to do a quick firing demonstration to show how this is now cycling and how quick I can actually cycle it. So, I only have five rounds, uh, so this way it's not too, too long to load and also actually fire it. But, quick firing demonstration, I have my dart catcher set up down 
at the end of the garage. So here we go, five shots. And you saw before when I was kind of taking it slow and it was getting jammed up, I just quick shot five rounds out of this thing and it cycled beautifully. Not one problem whatsoever. Um, and I was just removing the ratchet piece. That was it. I think one or two other pieces may have fallen out, but they obviously weren't important. Now, one thing I do want to note though with this though, even with those pieces out, the trigger lock is still in place, and I believe that's actually tied to the bolt itself, because when you cycle the bolt back, with everything I took out of it, I still cannot pull the trigger. And no, this is not on, even though the safety switch is still intact, this is not cycling. Or you can't uh, deprime the blaster, I should say. Uh, now... If you've upgraded the spring and or removed the AR, I could definitely see this being a major issue. Uh, dry firing, because you never want to do that with anything that has an upgraded spring and no AR in it. This is still stock spring and AR is intact, so I don't mind dry firing this every once in a blue moon. You really shouldn't anyway, but that's besides the point. But with the pieces that I have taken out, I can actually now just constantly cycle the bolt regardless without having to pull the trigger so let's say i fired my last shot and i'm like oh crap i just closed the breach and i'm out i don't want to dry fire it load around and now fire you off your last shot simple as that so i may not be able to deprime it but i can i can safely fire off one round without having to you know, any major complications. So, I'm very happy with this now. And also, the colors just came out so beautifully. Um, they really did, and I'm very happy with it now. So, but that's going to be it for this video. So, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please, as always, throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Jupiter. And if you have one, what are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments. I love reading them all. And, ooh. Don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And again, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later.